part two. So here I am sitting here uh, on the eve of the March on Washington uh, that happened exactly 50 years from right now in this moment. And reflecting back on my day and my journey to get where I'm at right now as a over 50 um, uh, Afro-American uh, native veteran um, blah 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 and uh, I really wanted to get this off my chest because I think that it, it deserves explaining um, today I got a chance to take a uh, an upgrade test with this union that I'm with now uh, as a cardholder member and supporter of the union uh, and um, realizing that in my 25, 35, 30 years experience in these crafts and whatnot that if nothing else I've actually uh, found uh, my own comfort in my own skin uh, as a black dominant man of color um, that has a kind of twist to it that most people who are not uh, would not quite understand and that therein lies the reason why I'm uh, making this little journal of sorts. Um, around this time 50 years ago my mama had just had me, and yet and still she wanted to make sure that she was capable of being a part of all this, her little young self, uh, and I. Ran away from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, all the way down here to D.C. on hope and a prayer just to be a part of this poor people's campaign, this, this big momentous occasion. She made it down here enough that she wiggled her way all the way up to the front and we actually were on one of those steps in front of the uh, podium and whatnot when even Martin Luther King made his speech. And in his speech, he said, you know, there come a day when people will be judged not by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. Now, that didn't really cover just the, co the color of their skin, but it, co it covered the protocols of culture that that used to demand that only certain people who jump through certain hoops and therein lies the twist with why we are stuck where we are right now as a people in what I consider to be the test market for what most people in the rest of the world would call the new world order and it doesn't look that bad because everybody wants to be an American I mean if they can have Americanized living exactly like we got it everywhere else in the world there would be world peace like you would not believe. Therein lies another story. Back to where I'm at. So they're having these celebrations and whatnot, and I just wanted to leave out here a little dedication. My mom, Francine, then Harris, uh, Owens, Sims, Bates, uh, Gates, one of those, um, had me and her, just her new baby, first baby and me and her and came up here right about this time just to be a part of that had no idea there was going to be some momentous king speech or anything but all of where I'm kind of beating around the bush to is the mere fact that that black woman sat there and listened to that man talk about a dream that I can honestly admit right now right now today uh, it might not have trickled down as of yet kind of like Juneteenth to the rest of the world but I can honestly say it feels good to be in my skin right now and it does exist because that's where I'm at right now and that's very rare because in all my 50 years I've spent more of my life watching my parents and others fight for the right for me to exist exactly in the manner into which I am right now and God knows I'm blessed enough to be thankful but um, 
what I really want to do is be honest about this because, see, uh, between me doing, you know, us being born in Pittsburgh and owning one of the first bookstores and community centers during the civil rights era and being deeply connected into a lot of the uh, events and whatnot that occurred and, and personally exposed to a lot of the movers and shakers back in the day when everybody had a landline and everybody needed to know somebody in order to get safely between one place and another and we were those people. So I was blessed enough to be to be surrounded around a lot of evolving people. Some of these people now have become very powerful people and in most cases would probably be slightly disgusted at the mere fact of seeing the image of me and not expecting me to be Republican. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's a good joke. Uh, and so here we are. And once again, I would love to bring my mom up here and we tell our story because she tells it best um, as to how she really honestly believed. And true enough, she's raised three beautifully black children in a productive manner into which uh, we all actually have defied the odds that most people would have considered our social status would have would have would have demanded that we would become and therein lies where we're at now because now all bets are off like the Mayans said this is the end of all things and that means that all the things that were hidden and in secret that prepared each other for something that was going to occur is occurring right now and therein lies the uh, stickler of sorts because we still have people that, sur that are suffering on both ends of the color spectrum from post-traumatic slave syndrome, you know, uh, and not being capable of quickly being able to relate to each other in the same gene pool more than whomever they want to say that they belong to across the river or pond or ocean or wherever that they come from. Now... I can honestly say that I've been in and or around at least five United States presidencies to the distance that I'm with you, and that would have never been dreamed of. Um, I've been self-employed for the past 30, 35 years and counting, and never been homeless or starving or blah, blah, blah. I've gotten real close, but in the process, you know, all my kids are grown and they're doing fine. Everybody's talented. I'm not a deadbeat. All these things actually boil down to guess what's? Uh, very real right now. What's very real is the mere fact that, in a way, everything that was asked for at the March on Washington 15 years ago was slightly delivered by the time that people start finding ways of separating themselves into smaller interest groups enough to get what most of us are getting now. Problem is, is that it was damn near millions and 63 that really honestly believe that now we can't find millions of people that can understand just how blessed we are enough to actually just put that energy out there allow it to marinate that's what this whole thing is about uh it's not that you have to protest it's that you have to stand with others united we stand that's a real interesting uh, uh, uh dynamic and yet and still, we're still trying to uh, figure out how we do that culturally or interculturally. Americans have been really spoiled with the 1950s. And uh, strangely enough, um, because uh, I know and very many other people know that damn near 80% of the, of the athletes that that occupy the, the coliseums when they have the Olympics, all live and train in the United States. That means that every representative of every other uh, genetic society all exist here already. This is that melting pot beyond anything else. And I think that paranoia will destroy you solely because paranoia, chaos equals cash. And right now, everybody wants to complain about everybody else doing something else with theirs as they do nothing but complain. Um, like that little joke, you know, I've seen the enemy, and it's us. Well, I'm not the enemy. Never was. Never will be. 
and yet and still, it's going to be more difficult for you to understand what the hell am I going through, what the hell am I talking about here, and why the hell am I talking about this whole March on Washington, and what importance is that to me right now, today, in this world, right now. I'm a Alpha Master Pimp Sir Easy, Hafiz Harris, um, son of Francine Harris. I'm I always call her Francine Harris, who actually proved Martin Luther King right by stating that, you know what, one day we're going to have it. I'm living proof that if nothing else, I stand on my character. And it might not look like the quality of my image might be something that you can withstand where you're at, but here, right here, here is the starting grounds for diversity at its best. And uh, I think that's what it's all about. So uh, you be good to yourself and everybody else. Stop tripping. Peace.